Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. I have returned. It's F F episode 1520, 1520. We got through Christmas. Somehow we made it through. And I didn't want to do a podcast on Quant, the first day of Kwanzaa. Uh, otherwise known as International Floating Day, the floating holiday, as it was called by many companies. Mike's Daily Podcast. The day after Christmas, which I am so thankful that I had off, but still there was no way I was going to be able to muster up a podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. So today I'm going to muster up one, and there was nothing to talk about. Anyway, last show, I was talking to you. Anyway. From the other side of Christmas where we were enjoying the lights and whatnot. And now I think we got to look at what we got. And that is New Year's just around the corner and wrapping up 2000. Mike's Daily Podcast. 17, my friend. What a year. The year in which a deer Mike's hit my car. Daily Oops. Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't go so well with the deer. Oh, dear. But I got a couple of texts from my good friend, Kevin, who used to do the addendum with Kevin. And he wrote me and said, one, you are correct. I am not gel hacks. And to nurse Tim was bleeping hilarious. Gel hacks, I think... It took me a while to figure out what he was saying, but he was talking about when I was talking about Joe Hex. That's who it was. Joe Hex. The guy that our uh, wonder... uh, He's going to be playing another comic book hero in the upcoming... What is it? Avengers movie. He's going to be the guy that kills everybody. That's why I'm not a big fan of the upcoming Avengers movie. I know they're all going to die. So why? Why do I go to go see this? I don't want to see all my favorite superheroes die. No! <sighs> Some people walked in. And I know you're curious as to who they are. Hello, my God. These are Jolene Stewart's gift shop supervisor. Oh, my God. Christmas is over and we sold out everything in the gift shop. And here's today's podcast picture. You did. Yeah, we had a special after Christmas sale, and we sold it all yesterday. The first day of Kwanzaa? Yeah. Look who else is here. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floorman! And this is John Deere, the engineer. Actually, Kwanzaa is seven days of holiday. Oh, okay. You know, the... Uh, podcast picture. Oh my gosh, my wonderful dog, Basil the Boxer, whom Basil and I, uh, every couple of months or so, get asked to go walking with the very beautiful Katie, who once did this segment. Holding court with Lady Katie. Lady Katie. Katie. And just because I'm playing all the intros of segments that I've done in the past with other people, this this was the addendum with Kevin one. Addenda with Kevin. Anyway, cafe anyway, I was walking with the beautiful Lady Katie and Basil the Boxer and I had a wonderful walk (laughs) with her dog, Mally. Mally, Mally, Malware. And we did this on, let's see, Christmas Eve. And the day before Christmas. And it just, you know what? That's all I need to do is have a nice dog walk and then go and have a beer with my good and only friend. I mean, my good and only listener. I have other friends, but she's a great friend and a one of a kind friend and an awesome friend. And But she is definitely my one and only listener for my podcast. Oh, I guess Kevin was listening too. But yes, Sylvia... And I had a beer with her lovely husband, Jeff. We discussed music. We sat in a crappy dive bar in Castro Valley. And we uh, heard some Christmas songs that were... Oh, they had a special rule that night. A, you can't use your credit card. Well, this is most bars in the Bay Area. They can't afford the points that they got to pay. 
So that sucks. I hate I hate when I gotta use cash. Cause you don't get points for cash. You don't get reward points. Dang it, man. I got some reward points this year. I in fact that's part of what I was doing during my time at KKIQ where I work on the weekend and got to listen to two days worth of Christmas music. I heard enough Johnny Mathis to flatten an elephant. Oh my god. It's the most wonderful time. If you keep singing that song, it's not. Stop it. Stop it now. The only Christmas song that I looked forward to over and over again. And as I began this sentence, I thought by the end of the sentence, I will have a song that I enjoyed hearing over and over again. And that would probably be one that's going to raise the hackles up on the back of your wherever they have hackles. And that would be, do they know it's Christmas time? I know. You're saying Feed the World, Ridiculous. The guy that I produce the morning show for, he I played the song on his show and he proceeded to rip me a new one and say, oh, that's the name of another segment. Mike Mike ripped ripped someone a new one. And he proceeded to explain why that was the worst Christmas song ever. You know, Feeding the World, that's crazy. This song is from the 80s, back when we cared about things like people dying of, dying of starvation. Dur, 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 dur. It's like, shut up. It's a great song. Phil Collins plays the drums. All my favorite singers when I grew up in the 80s, my, my favorite, I wanted to be a British singer in the worst way. I even... Had a horrible British accent for a while Which I hear the NPR (laughs) There's some young lady uh, Leanna Fryer Is that her name? On NPR She hosts when uh, Lourdes Garcia Navarro Can't be on So she She's got In fact I talked to Katie about this I'm like how Is it normal To talk Because when When this Laura Fryer talks It's always like this She's always at full volume. Everything she says is in caps. Oh, it's a little too loud for NPR. I know you got to break the mold eventually. I know you can't just keep marching to the same drum. Things got to change. Things got to progress. But God, she just, well, what annoys me is okay I try and give to you okay sometimes my voice gets a little crazy and I get a little weird and I and I like to you know do funny things with my voice but I'm trying to be myself and I get the feeling this Leanne Fryer who you may or may not hear this week cuz I think she's filling in for a lot of people this week on NPR and and so you're uh, when I say NPR I mean she's being heard everywhere I will listen to the station in Huntsville that carried NPR sometimes because I got this thing that lets me listen to well you know you on your computer you can listen to just about any radio station on the planet now it's wonderful you can back in the day when you wanted to hear a station in San Francisco and you were living elsewhere well you had to come to San Francisco to hear that station unless you had a friend who made cassette copies of that station and in that case you were pathetic But now you can go, hey, I want to listen to that station in San Francisco. You type it in. There you're you're streaming. And uh, I remember listening to the owner of Cumulus Radio, the one of the Dickey brothers say, nobody knows what streaming is streaming. That sounds like you got some kind of urinary problem and you can't stream in the bathroom. Ha ha he her. And that was back in the day. Now everybody knows what streaming is. Now everybody knows it's not a thing you do in the bathroom. Although you can do that as well. I don't want to get into that. Let's get into the... Let me muster up my point. And that is that this Leanne Fryer is loud. And we were discussing that. And I enjoyed my weekend because I got to speak with... Sylvia in this bar and listen to oh the uh, if you put in a song on the jukebox which I find fascinating you cannot have a bar without a jukebox even in today's modern era where we can just take our smartphones out and pick any song we want and play it no you've got to have that jukebox that's if you got to have a bar uh, the jukebox must be in the bar is what I'm saying and they were people were picking Christmas songs, but the 
there was a sign on the jukebox that said, if you pick a non-Christmas song, we are going to stop it. We are going to... It cannot play. And Sylvia picked I'm Coming Out by Diana Ross, and it was deleted. He stopped... the, The bartender stopped the song. That's not a Christmas song! So that was my Christmas Eve. Spending oh, and they were running uh, a Christmas story with the kid that used to what was his name? Marvin he used to drink the Ovaltine. Mervin, uh, and he would Olaf would drink the Ovaltine, and that was you know the the movie with the lamp that looks like a woman's shapely leg. That's all what we were experiencing that night in a horrible dive bar. In Castro Valley, enjoying a drink, enjoying some pizza too that Sylvia got, and enjoying Leilani popping by, who is a huge dog fan. And it was great. It was a fun, warm Christmas Eve, one of the best I've ever had. Thank you, Sylvia. Now, I don't know how your Christmas Eve was, but when I am off from my full time job, I'm working at my part time job, KKIQ. And let me just, usually it runs smoothly. And I just sort of oversee stuff. But all kinds of crazy stuff was hitting the fan that day on Christmas Day. I I couldn't really relax. I didn't have time to do this podcast. Everything was falling apart. I had to do... You know, it just was not good. I I did not enjoy my whole holiday because of the fact I had to work part-time. At a job that that was... Pitched to me when I first took it as a cush job. It was n- anything but cush. But now, as I have just named a marijuana plant, uh, the, the, uh, what do you call it? Since I do not smoke marijuana, I know there are different, what do you go, types, brands? I guess brands, right? I go into a store and I want some of this type of marijuana and it has different names. Well, apparently, NPR did point this out. If you smoke too much marijuana, guess what happens? Those little cabinoids and whatnot in the in the pot will make you nauseous. It has the reverse effect. Marijuana is supposed to give you an appetite if you're sick. Well, if you smoke too much of it, it will end up making you nauseous. And you will want to take hot baths. This is true. This was on NPR yesterday, I think. It, it, it's something they're discovering and doctors have not been able to diagnose it. They've finally given it a name. I think it's called cab- cabino- carcinoid syndrome. Carcinoid syndrome. A symptoms you might get if you already have it. T- no, that's a cancer. Okay, that's not what it is. Maybe it's so no- new, it doesn't have a name yet. Uh, NPR, too much marijuana. Let's see if that brings it up. Uh, see, nope, nope. Okay, well, cannabis, cannab. It's like cannaboid, benoid. You get the idea. So just be aware of that. I thought I'd, but you know, because what I do is I bring you important information. For example, in Fremont, we have a, a large population of people who are from India. Pakistan, that region, where apparently uh, you can't, if you're a woman, you are are not allowed to wear pants. You have to wear a dress. This thing, I don't know what the if it's called a dress. It looks like a dress to me, so that's what I'm going to call it in my highly informed and ignorant show today. Um, so what happens is, though, I have been noticing when these women gain weight, a lot of weight, uh, they're, you know, their belly is huge. It almost looks as if they're pregnant, but they are not because they are way past the menopause, I think is the correct scientific term. At any rate, they, they are wearing these... Well, in Hawaii, we used to call them moomoos because I lived in Hawaii for 12 years in my dreams because I was a TJ Maxx. Uh, no, that would be Magnum PI. One of those guys. Anyway... Cafe anyway I was Anyway In Fremont you see a lot of these moomoos Or whatever they are called And women with very large bellies Walking around with them And what I noticed last week 
when I was wa- going through Trader Joe's is uh, as I was going there, a large wind came along and blew one of these ladies' dresses straight up in the air. And that was a wonderful Christmas surprise. I don't know if I was ready for that or not, but it just, it happened in Fremont. And I think it happens a lot when it's windy. So just be aware of that when you come to Fremont. And I wanted to share that with you as well as messing up that marijuana disease name. And there was nothing to talk about when I was going to do my podcast over the weekend. Nothing except for this John Oliver regretting his interview with Dustin Hoffman. Who cares? And then Edward Snowden coming out with an app. Yes, this app. If you are want to be a whistleblower, what you do is you take your phone and you put it somewhere where there's people talking and you can record them. Yeah, we've already got that. It's called the record feature on your phone. You've got to record. You can record memo. You just turn that on and you, which you cannot do. There's all kinds of legal repercussions for this. According to Archer phrasing, as we mentioned that a whole bunch of times, did I save that sound effect? Is it easily accessible? No, I've got this one instead. Bueller. Bueller. Oh, wait, wait. Bueller. Phrasing. There we go. According to uh, Patton Oswalt's character on Archer, you can, in the state of New York, actually record someone if you, if you are... Uh, suspicious that a crime is about to be committed, supposedly. So that was the big news. Hey, what other news is there? Customers who say the iPhone maker fraudulently hid the fact that some iPhones slowed over time, but the problem could be fixed by replacing the battery. Another lawsuit was filed this week in Brooklyn Federal Court. Three lawsuits were filed in federal courts last week in Illinois, Los Angeles, and... Lawsuits, lawsuits, lawsuits. <sighs> Let's go back to the wonderful... Oh, Marco, who does the segment called... The Marco Minute. The Marco Minute. He gave me a bottle of wine from his family. And I'm going to give his family a free plug on my podcast. The name of their wine is... Yukolovic Vineyard. That's U-K-A-L-O-V-I-C. Yukolovic vineyard they're in rescue california and they make an estate wine that's got a dog oh it's got their dog on it that passed away this year oh and a little horse or is that a mule that's a mule i think a donkey on the cover of the wine label oh yukolovic vineyard i can't wait to try this wine thank you marco all right well I think we covered just about nothing. But I do feel that I should let you know, if you like music and you want to hear a bunch of Christmas songs that are not Johnny Mathis or Band-Aid, and you want to hear some great Christmas music that's original, go to insomniaradio.net. Not Insomniac Radio, insomniaradio.net. And go to their Daily Dose section, and they've got all these free downloads, these free Christmas songs you can download. And I did that. You should, too. Uh, There's all kinds of crazy songs. The Gasoline Brothers, Derek D., a band called Kitchmas, Hands to Pay, uh, Pop, etc., a bunch of bands on there, Harmony Discord, They've all got these great songs, Christmas songs on there that you can download for free. Jack Blessing. He is an actor you saw on Moonlighting and George Lopez. He has died at the young age of 66. He was from Baltimore, Maryland. Robert Mueller may indict Paul Manafort again. Two things about special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation were clear. First, the White House's big... Concern that Mueller would follow the money And second, Mueller is following the money It's been seven months Since Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein ordered Bob Mueller To take over the FBI's counterintelligence Probe into possible Links between the Kremlin and people Associated with the Trump campaign Trump's lawyers have long said they expected The probe to stay focused and end quickly Josh Brolin 
He played Josh, Joe Hex. Josh Brolin. I can never remember his name. And I know that his dad, James Brolin, is married to Barbara Streisand. I didn't, we didn't play any Barbara Streisand Christmas songs. Why is that? Trump's lawyers have cabinoid fever. No, that's not the name of it. Trump's lawyers have long said they expected the probe to stay focused and end quickly. Instead, Mueller has assembled a team of prosecutors with expertise in handling financial investigations and white-collar crime and obtained guilty pleas for crimes that weren't committed during the election year. I was watching a, what do you call it, a documentary. Boy, that name was hard to, that word was hard to find in my brain. Documentary, which I'm going to cancel Netflix at the end of the year. So I'm watching Netflix for stuff that uh, that I've just, uh, you know, want to wrap up. And one of the documentaries I was watching was about the Roosevelts, Teddy and Franklin Delano. And the narrator for that is Peter Coyote. Peter Coyote is a narrator that has a specific way of talking when he is doing his narration and he doesn't talk very fast and it's very dramatic and every sentence ends with something horrible happened there Theodore Roosevelt went back to the house where he found his mother had just died and his wife was about to die at 2 p.m. in the afternoon This is one of the lines he read in the documentary that I was reading when he was talking about Theodore Roosevelt going to the Great West and losing all his money in financial ruin. And what's funny is, Peter Coyote, you know the sentence is going to end with something bad, and then it ends with something bad, but then he takes it one bit lower to being it really, really bad. Peter Coyote. Do, you know what? I'm not going to be able to find any Peter Coyote. Like, this fast. This this improvisational narrator. Let's see. Oh, wait. Wait, wait something just popped up. A, uh, this doesn't have any or, Peter Coyote. An astrophysicist oh, from Stanford University takes a close look at some of the case studies never mentioned in Condon's summary. The Condon... Yeah, that was a horrible... Ex- the example, and also that was Peter Coyote younger. Nowadays, he t- he w- talks real slow. So this show has been about how people talk, and I've always been fascinated by how people talk. I am fascinated with this, your your voice. Your voice is beautiful to me. And if you would like to call me, you can call me at 336-MM-DAILY. That's 336-MM-DAILY. Or you can write me at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com and check out all the past podcast pictures. Today's podcast picture is of Basil the Boxer at Carmel. This was two weeks ago. And, oh, I can't wait to go back. And it was a... It's a I just love... Carmel so much I would never buy a house there when I go there I'll go for only a couple hours because I can't stand all the tourists or the richy rich rich people that live there that are snooty as hell I gotta get the hell out but Melania Trump is a fan of ABC's How to Get Away with Murder according to the New York Times Melania told the Times Katie Rogers that the ABC legal drama about a lawyer and her students tied up in a murder in murder cover ups was her favorite TV show Well, probably not the best name for a TV show for Melania to like. Whatever. She likes the intrigue. Good for her. I'm not going to... I'm not going to talk bad about Melania. I think she's a fascinating woman. I think there's all kinds of stuff going on with that relationship between her and Donald. But whatever. I would love to know more about Melania. And yeah, she's pretty. And yeah... Trump won the election. And yeah, the Russians helped. America elected Donald Trump. And yeah, the Russians helped. With their RTTV. Thank you, Pocahontas. I mean, Elizabeth Warren. The U.S. sanctioned two more senior North Korean officials yesterday. The latest attempt to hit the country's nuclear program. Uh, But in South Korea, another deadly weapon is back in the headlines. Anthrax. The... Blue House was forced to deny President Moon Jae-in and other top officials had been vaccinated against the biological weapon. Presidential spokesman 
Park Soo Hyun said the Korean Centers for Disease Control and Prevention bought 1,000 doses of anthrax vaccines to be given to biochemical terrorism, counterterrorism agents or civilians in the case of anthrax exposure. The vaccines arrived in November. A flight from Los Angeles to Tokyo turned around after four hours due to an unauthorized person among the 150 passengers aboard. Dude, that's crazy. You're freaking almost there and then you got to turn around. That's nuts. There was no security or safety threat involved. However, it appears that the rogue passenger who has not been identified managed to proceed from check-in all the way to the final boarding pass check at LAX and board the wrong plane. New York removed a misleading nuclear fallout shelter sign. By the way, one other thing around Christmas that I thoroughly enjoyed was not nuclear fallout signs. It was talking to my German relatives on Google Hangouts. I didn't use Skype. I used Google Hangouts. And I saw my cousin Iris, her daughter, her son, her husband. I saw everybody I haven't seen in like freaking eight years. And I I loved it. It was just a warm, happy Christmas time thanks to technology. And that happened. uh, You have to do it funky because they're in Europe. You got to do it like because it it was midnight for them and two o'clock in the afternoon for me. So big thanks to them. It was great talking to them. Oh, made my Christmas. New York City has quietly begun removing some of the corroding yellow nuclear fallout shelter signs that were appended to thousands of buildings in the 1960s. Saying many are misleading Cold War relics that no longer denote functional shelters. The small metal signs are remnants of the anxieties over the nuclear arms race between the United States and former Soviet Union, which prompted John F. Kennedy to create the shelter program in 1961 in cities around the nation. The signs, with their simple design of three joined triangles inside a circle, became an emblem of the era. Some New Yorkers barely notice them today. To others, they can be an uneasy reminder that the threat may have altered and diminished, but it has not vanished. Um, The the C-SPAN 3 over the weekend was showing an old James Stewart. Jimmy Stewart, who you probably heard on It's a Wonderful Life. He didn't talk like that. He talks, he was more like that. I get it wrong to Jimmy Stewart voice. Ah. Clarence. Mary. He was narrating a, a documentary. This was back in the 60s about the Air Force and the new technology they were coming up with and jet powered planes and whatnot. And it was so fun to watch because uh, Jimmy Stewart saying, Soon there'll be no difference between flying in the air. And flying in space. Oh, it was an awesome. You got to look it up. I would look it up for you right now, but I'm too busy reading you this story about a cat who made it home, missing for 10 years, somehow made it back home after the California wildfires. This is according to Fox News. Pilot, who's now 13, was adopted by the Thompson family as a kitten in 2004. He was three years old when he failed to return to the Thompson family's Santa Rosa home, so up here in the Bay Area. But Pilot was found October 31st by a good Samaritan who was searching for her own cats in the post-fire rebel. That's a crazy story. There's a lot more going on than this stupid Fox News article says, so I will end it there. What's app is going to ditch the BlackBerry operating system and the Windows phone by the new year because well it's those things aren't really being used by anybody anymore they're not making them anymore they the window phone is done Blackberry although Blackberry had a good quarter last quarter I heard they they're uh, the other stuff that they're doing with the company is helping the company And I can't be any more specific than that because that was so specific. But WhatsApp is saying goodbye. Um, Although the Facebook-owned messaging app will continue to work on these platforms, users won't be able to create new accounts or re-verify existing accounts. I don't even use WhatsApp. 
WhatsApp's been absorbed into so much that Facebook does. And I'm not going to use the Facebook Messenger app. Screw you, Facebook. You you ain't going to get me. I got my Google Hangouts. I got my Skype. That's all I need. And I got my regular messaging on my phone. Whether you received a new iPhone over the holidays as a gift or treated yourself to one or you're a frickin' lemming, hey, you may not know some of the stuff that your iPhone does. You can create custom vibrations. Uh, You can fix Siri's pronunciation. You can shake to delete. You can easily scan QR codes now. You can hide your private photos, expand your storage, track a flight, use the hidden trackpad, quickly edit, and share a screen grab. Wait, what the hell? This is all stuff you can do with, with a Samsung phone. And check that a surface is level. No, there are apps for that. What the... Ah. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcast Valley. Well, I'm up to date. I don't know about you. Next show, it's going to be the wonderful the Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, and the brewmaster. A big thank you to you, to Josh Brolin, to John Oliver, to the fake news, the real news, to that crappy dive bar I was at, to Sylvia, to Kevin. And to Marco's Wine Company, thank you so much. While I'm filling in for Lulu Garcia Navarro, I thought I'd bring you a dose of Christmas spirit from the country where I live, Spain. There's a Spanish holiday tradition called El Gordo, the fat one. And that doesn't refer to Santa Claus. (sighs) Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikestvpodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome.